Hi, Stephen from Own or Disown. Well, there's no denying that we're all really excited to see what the uh, mobile RTX 3000's uh, GPUs are going to be like. And it's not going to be long before we find out. I suspect January it's CES. Anyway, what I wanted to do in this video is to replicate you know, what pups we could see, certainly at the high end. Now, I've got a, a desktop 3080 over there. I uh, That's defaults usually around about 300 watts. So I you know, I set the power to about 200 watts to replicate what we'd get in like a desktop replacement system. For example, the Aura 17X, which I just recently reviewed, that's got a, uh, an RTX 2080 Super at 200 watts. So I, I'm pitching, you know, 200 watts against 300 watts here. Now I have included in some of my results what the 2080 Super gets. So you can get an idea, I've done that in two games and I'll do a, a follow-up video to it, testing more games as well, of course. And uh, what I've done in terms of uh, when I set it to 200 watts, I also uh, changed the CPU because the CPU I've got in the desktop is the i9-10900K, uh, so that's 10 cores, and the turbo is, of course, about 4.9 gigahertz or so. But So what I've done, I disabled two cores to make that uh, an 8-core CPU, and I set the clocks at 4 gigahertz uh, to replicate what it's going to be you know, like in a laptop type of situation. So, of course, future videos, I will do uh, testing at, uh, say, 115 watts and 150 watts as well. And um, I'm also going to be doing an AMP versus eGPU video using the desktop 3080 to see how we get on there. And I'll probably throw in my 2080 to see how that compares as well. Now, there's, of course, a one big if in this uh, in this testing that uh, NVIDIA won't, uh, you know, reduce the number of processing cores compared to the desktop. I mean, there's no way for me to know that. But uh, I'm assuming it's kept the same. and I've just adjusted the, the power. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the results. First up is Battlefield 5 using Ultra Settings, DX12 and Ray Tracing at 1080p. At the top is the 3080 with stock 300 watts, and underneath, simulating the laptop with the CPU at 4 GHz and the GPU at 200 watts. There is a definite clock rate and frame rate hit as we would expect, to the tune of 9%. Switching to 2560x1440 increases this to 25% difference as the CPU becomes less of a factor. In the chart, I show 1080p in green and 1440p in blue. The top bars are with the 3080 at 300 watts and the lower bars at 200 watts. Interestingly, using DX11 puts much more emphasis on the CPU regardless if the 3080 is using 300 or 200 watts. Here is 1080p at the top and 1440p underneath using 200 watts, so what we would likely to see in a laptop. There really isn't a huge difference between them. In fact, as you can see, we are very CPU limited at 1080p using DX11, but you still get much better frame rates compared to DX12 and ray tracing. Anywhere from 36 to 100% more, depending on resolution and GPU power. Far Cry New Dawn was tested using the inbuilt benchmark. At the top is 1440p, 300 watts, and underneath is 1440p and 200 watts. Although there is a deficit, it isn't by much, and the clock rate at 200 watts is still pretty good. There is a lot of data in this chart because I also give a little taster to, as to how a 200 watt 3080 compares to a laptop RTX 2080 Super that also pulls up to 200 watts. So first off, switching to 200 watts gives 11% lower frame rate regardless of the resolution, and also moving to 1080 from 1440p gives a 6% increase regardless of power mode. Just to mix things up a little bit, here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider using DX12 higher settings. 2560 by 1440. At the top is the RTX 3080 at 200 watts, but using no ray tracing. And at the bottom, 300 watts, but using the ultra ray tracing preset, but no DLSS. The extra watts still provides 11% improvement despite having to do more work. The first shot, where no ray tracing was used, there was no difference between 1080p and 1440p when using the default 300 watts, showing a CPU limitation at 1080p. I switch that to 200 watts, we actually see a 28% improvement at 1080p, so this bodes well for laptops using 1080p displays. Compared to an RTX 2080 Super at 200 watts, there was a 5% improvement at 1080p and 21% at 1440p, as we reduce the CPU overhead. Now this is the type of improvement we would like to see. 109 FPS at 1440p is about 10% behind the desktop 2080 Ti. Let's see the effect of adding ray tracing to the mix. 
Again, at 300 watts, there is no difference between 1080p and 1440p. So we are still CPU limited at 200 watts and now gives a nice 45% boost in frame rate at 1080p. The difference between 200 watts and 300 watts is 14% at 1080p due to the CPU limitation, but 42% at 1440p, dropping from 121 FPS to 71 FPS. Comparing the 200 watt results to the RTX 2080 Super at 200 watts, we see a 21% gain at 1080p and 27% gain at 1440p, so it does show that the 3080 will help in games that use ray tracing. 71 FPS at 1440p with ray tracing using the highest settings is still a great performance, should we see this in a laptop. For Metro Exodus, I use the inbuilt benchmark, running it with the extreme quality preset, with and without ray tracing and DLSS. First up is DX12 only, and we see about a 26% reduction lowering the power to 200 watts. That's not bad at all. In fact, from the reviews I have read, the 2080 Ti is some 35% behind the 3080 in this title. So that would put a 200 watt 3080 nearly 10% of the 2080 Ti. Imagine seeing that kind of performance in a laptop. Now, adding ray tracing and DLSS, we see a similar situation with a 28% reduction at 1080p, going from 300 watts to 200 watts, and 24% at 1440p. We also see decent resolution scaling in this title because it's very demanding on the GPU at the extreme quality setting. For PUBG, I played a map and then used the replay feature to maintain consistency. Again, with the 300 watt GPU, we don't see great scaling at 1080p. Only a 7% improvement over 1440p versus 29% when we drop the power to 200 watts. Likewise, we see the biggest difference between 300 watt and 200 watt at 1440p with a 23% reduction, which I still think is very good. Rainbow Six Siege was tested using the inbuilt benchmark. Switching to 200 watts from 300 watts sees a 10% reduction in frame rate at 1080p, which increases to 21% at 1440p as we, as we become less CPU dependent. The frame rates are amazing. Even at 1440p at 200 watts, we are averaging 242 FPS at auto settings. Finally, Star Wars Battlefront 2 using DX11 and ultra settings. At 1080p, I hit the 200 FPS frame rate cap. I tried a console prompt to get around it, but unfortunately it didn't work. So I stuck with 1440p. Lowering the 3080 to 200 watts saw a 16% drop, which again, I think is great. In this chart, I averaged out all of the data to show the effect of switching to 200 watts as shown in the top two bars and the effect of changing resolution as shown by the bottom two bars. As expected, 1080p bottlenecks the full power 3080, so reducing it to 200 watts sees a lower performance hit than 1440p. I think even at 1440p, the 3080 is CPU limited somewhat, and perhaps if we see 4K panels on an RTX 3080 laptop, we may see closer to 30 to 35% reduction. But remember, only if it's 200 watts. So there you have it. Of course, as I suspect, there's going to be a range of different power modes, 115 watts, 150 watts, perhaps even up to the 200 watts. So as I say, I will do some more testing at lower powers to see what effect we get. And of course, there's a big assumption that they're not changing the number of processing cores in the mobile 3080. And I'll do a, a likewise comparison when I get the 3070. So make sure you're subscribed or stay tuned to catch that video. Thank you for watching. Bye now.